Quite a performance by Drew Holiday at the end of game three. Gets the and one. And game four. Uh, well, yes, a, b- a big offensive rebound at the end of game four. Game three, though, is when he really shined. That right? was the moment. Big stop on Siakam where yeah, he loses his balance. He's falling backwards. He's still able to strip Siakam, keep his feet, get the basketball, eventually gets the and one that puts him up. Massive game. And so when we ask the question of the Celtics different enough from 2022, there's a lot of differences. I heard Jalen talking about this after the game. You know, people act like we're still the same team from five years ago. Different players, different coaches. We've had three different coaches in five years or whatever he said. I mean, the coach is different. Holiday is different. White has been unlocked. Maybe you'll have Porzingis, you know. But I do think at the top, everything sort of fits together. And this is where I do think the Marcus Smart thing got in the way a little bit. Drew Holiday is comfortable in his role. And I think Tatum and Jalen Brown were always kind of looking to Marcus Smart in endgame situations, which was backwards. I don't want to blame Marcus Smart for the losses because it should be on Tatum and Brown, right? It should be on your best players. But I do think that was always a backwards way of going about it. Who was drawing up plays in the huddle and acting like the coach and literally taking the coach's seat? (laughs) Pushing the coach out of the way. Giving the coach talking points. That was Marcus Smart. And it's like, you can have a guy who does a lot of the things Marcus Smart does. The quote-unquote winning plays that Drew Holiday made. You can have that in a different player who's already won, knows what it takes to win, and he just fits in on the team better. And so if I was going to quantify it and say what's different about the Celtics from coming up short in 2022 versus now, experience is a big one. Tatum and Brown have been there before. They know maybe not what it takes to win, but they know what they did in 2022 didn't work. Hopefully they've learned from that. Uh, And the other part would be I just think everybody – like a Drew Holiday, it fits more into their role, has bought more into their role, which means guys like Tatum at the end of some of these games, and more specifically Jalen Brown, are the one taking over with the ball in their hands instead of somebody else. Yeah, you think back to last year and even the years before that, I always would talk about this with Brad Celtics, especially towards the very end that last season before Ime Odoka came in. I felt like nobody on those teams knew what their roles were. And I do believe that Marcus Smart's style of play and his force of personality, along with how proud he was of his position with the Celtics, uh, sometimes stunted the opportunities for both of the Jays. Like, I bought into that. I said, you're taking a huge gamble when you trade for Porzingis because now you're demanding that those guys step into the leadership roles on the court. And if anything, at the, in this series, I can say that both of them absolutely did that. So I, I always loved Drew Holiday. Like, that's a guy that I've wanted on this team for years before now. I just never thought that it would actually happen because I never thought anything anybody would be stupid enough to give him up in a place where he could land here where he would fit in so seamlessly. So in a way, I agree with you. I just, I wouldn't sit there and say, you know, it's just the absence of Grant Williams, Marcus Smart, uh, Malcolm Brogdon. Like, I think sometimes those guys may have been higher drama guys in the locker room, but it's more about the rise of both the Jays being the core of the leadership of yeah, this and so, team. So again, my, just to verbalize it properly, my real issue, I mean, look, I, I was never Smart's biggest fan, obviously, but... I think they look to him as much as he took it, right? And I think just getting him out of the way, that void, now there's no one. They don't look to anyone else. I mean, other guys made huge plays. I mean, Holiday made massive plays in game three. White hit the biggest shot last night. So, you know, there's a difference between guys stepping up and making plays when you need them to versus expecting someone else to make a play. Deferring. Yeah, and I think they did used to defer. And that's, that's a... That's a poor reflection on Tatum and Brown, even more so than Smart and his presence. And and getting that out of the way, I think you've seen that difference come up time and time again. This is why they got Drew Holiday. We talked about this on Friday, Arkan. You weren't in. But, like, this is why you got Drew Holiday. And I would kind of give him the side eye at different points because I'm very vested in this take. And I'm like, all right, when's he going to kick it into high gear? Like, I haven't been overly impressed. It looks like he coasts some nights. He had some bad games. I want to say it was the Denver game uh, down the stretch turning it over and missed shots in one of the regular season games against Denver, which doesn't matter now, but he did. And I'm like, when's he going to step it up? Well, now he started to step it up. And it's something like six or seven straight games where his numbers are off the charts and it's, he's playing both ways. And this is why you got him. And he's 1,000% worth the investment if this is how he's going to play in big games. You can't hit-
handle the truth. I, 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 that, the, definitely the Pacers could. Dare I say he's making winning plays at the end of these games? Yeah. I mean, it's true. He really is. And uh, he has the hardware to sort of back it up. And he's aware of what his role is. And he gets it. And he grasps it. And he understands it uh, in a way that Marcus Smart didn't. Because when Marcus Smart was here, it, they all looked up to Kyrie at first. But when he left, then Marcus Smart was the guy. And they looked up to him. And they were both still in their early 20s when all of this happened. So, I mean, that does make sense. But eventually, you got to let the kids start running on their own. And now that they are, you see them go further. And they've had help, obviously. They've had help in the way that it's all uh, shaken out here in terms of their opponents. But I think that you're right, Mego. I mean, it's not so much that the team is different around them. It is. But they're progressing. They're getting better. And they've been in this situation enough now that in the case of Jalen Brown, especially I've noticed so far, he's not making those same kind of mistakes. Arkan, and and I agree with you. Like, even Jalen looking like at one point last night, deep in the fourth, that he had a loose handle that he was going to lose. And then he just regained it. I'm like, oh, okay, this is growth. Oh, that kick to Derek White in the yeah. corner. It looked yeah. like he was going to lose the ball. Exactly. Yeah. I'm like, okay, wow. All right. And like, Jalen really can control his body in a different way compared to two years ago to 2022. But am I making too big of a deal out of this. Am I imagining this where I, it's something that I have been zeroed in on in this series in particular? It does feel like Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum play off each other offensively more. Like every time that I see Jason Tatum feed Jalen Brown, I feel like I make a little mental note of it because I complained for years I see it in that transition. it was your turn, my turn, ISO basketball with those two. And yeah, a lot of it is tra- I see in it in transition. transition a lot. I don't know how much I see it in the half court. But uh, but I still think a lot of the half court is White and Tatum. You know, uh, I, I still think that's a lot of what their half court offense is predicated on. But I, I, I probably see it more than two years ago for sure. Yeah, respectfully, was... I ask our Arkan. <laughs> well, there was a great play uh, last night where Brown was going out of bounds and he threw it to Tatum in the corner, and Tatum set up for three, and then he threw it back to Brown. He came back under mm-hmm. the basket and rejoined the play, and Tatum hit him. And I just watched that and thought, wow, you know, I feel like I don't see that very much. Yeah. I don't see these two guys setting each other up like that. Yeah, and you know, over the course of these playoffs, you still haven't seen. It's not like t- uh, Brown has had a ton of assists. Like his assist to turn. Not like they have like a it big two-man game. Is. They don't, but it's uh, it's no, definitely it's, noticeable when it comes to making decisions and things like that, and not turning the ball over for it's, sure. It's probably better for two from two years ago. Agreed. And you know, Drew Holiday makes the winning plays, Arkan, to use your terminology, but he doesn't like need to thump his chest about it. And you know, people don't need to tweet out winning plays and you know genuflect at the altar of winning plays, right? Because they know he's good. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Because no. you don't he, have to overcompensate. He for it. Yeah. doesn't need it. Right. Drew Holiday doesn't need it because you know he plays internationally for Team USA and he's won a championship and he feels validated without you know people on social media hashtag winning plays. He doesn't need it, which is why he doesn't get it. He doesn't need it. 